Women <clears throat> don't take bullets. It's not their role. It's not their job. It's not in their nature. Sane societies send men into war to die. It's biblical. Jesus Christ, a man, sacrificed his life for all of humanity. The sacrifice of man's life is practical, too. We can be replaced. One man and many women can birth a nation. One woman and many men will provoke a homicidal genocide among frustrated and angry men. A woman's womb is far more valuable than a man's penis. The virgin birth of Jesus proves my point. Women are designed to be protected, shielded from dangerous conflict. The collapse of American society is directly linked to our decision to move women in mass to the front lines, to place them in harm's way, to treat them as men. They won't take the bullets that go along with leadership. It's not because they're mentally weak. It's because the creator constructed them for a different purpose, a task arguably far more important. God created women to protect and nurture what grows inside their wombs, not rights, freedoms, and order. In the book of Genesis, God gave man dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The American culture war is a battle over dominion. The combatants are man and woman, believers and non-believers. The stakes are enormous. The outcome will determine the fate of our most fundamental freedom, free speech. Without it, we will lose our right to worship God freely and publicly. As is the case in Canada and Europe, the words written in the Bible will be classified as hate speech, punishable in criminal and civil court. Free speech is an issue worth dying for. I say all that to make my point about Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson grabbed a musket and enlisted in the free speech war. He joined the rebel army, the Confederates fighting the globalists, elites, progressives, establishment media, and politicians who believe free speech inhibits American advancement. Carlson announced he would relaunch his successful talk show on Twitter. Carlson took a bullet. He declared war on one of the most powerful people on the planet, Rupert Murdoch, and one of the most powerful establishment media corporations on the planet, Fox News. In conjunction with his announcement, Carlson's attorney accused Fox News of fraud and contract breachment over the network's surprise dismissal of Carlson two weeks ago. In a three-minute video posted to Twitter, Carlson said he planned to broadcast his show on Twitter because it's the lone consequential platform that allows free speech. Let's watch the video together. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. You often hear people say the news is full of lies, but most of the time that's not exactly right. Much of what you see on television or read the New York Times is in fact true in the literal sense. It could pass one of the media's own fact checks. Lawyers would be willing to sign off on it. In fact, they may have, but that doesn't make it true. It's not true. At the most basic level, the news you consume is a lie, a lie of the stealthiest and most insidious kind. Facts have been withheld on purpose, along with proportion and perspective. You are being manipulated. How does that work? Let's see. If I tell you that a man has been unjustly arrested for armed robbery, that is not, strictly speaking, a lie. He may have been framed. At this point, there's been no trial, so no one can really say. But if I don't mention the fact that the same man has been arrested for the same crime six times before, am I really informing you? No, I'm not. I'm misleading you. And that's what the news media are doing in every story that matters every day of the week, every week of the year. What's it like to work in a system like that? After more than 30 years in the middle of it, we could tell you stories. The best you can hope for in the news business at this point is the freedom to tell the fullest truth that you can but there are always limits. And you know that if you bump up against those limits often enough, you will be fired for it. That's not a guess, it's guaranteed. 
every person who works in English language media understands that. The rule of what you can't say defines everything. It's filthy, really, and it's utterly corrupting. You can't have a free society if people aren't allowed to say what they think is true. Speech is the fundamental prerequisite for democracy. That's why it's enshrined in the first of our constitutional amendments. Amazingly, as of tonight, there aren't many platforms left that allow free speech. The last big one remaining in the world, the only one, is Twitter, where we are now. Twitter has long served as the place where our national conversation incubates and develops. Twitter is not a partisan site. Everybody's allowed here, and we think that's a good thing. And yet, for the most part, the news that you see analyzed on Twitter comes from media organizations that are themselves thinly disguised propaganda outlets. You see it on cable news. You <coughs> talk about it on Twitter. The result may feel like a debate, but actually the gatekeepers are still in charge. We think that's a bad system. We know exactly how it works, and we're sick of it. Starting soon, we'll be bringing a new version of the show we've been doing for the last six and a half years to Twitter. We bring some other things too, which we'll tell you about. But for now, we're just grateful to be here. Free speech is the main right that you have. Without it, you have no others. See you soon. That was Tucker Carlson yesterday. And, and just keep in mind, those of you that have followed me for a long time, let's go back six, seven, eight years, if you followed me just that long. What I've been saying about Twitter for six, seven, eight years and its importance as the town square, as the uh, moderator of free speech, as the moderator of narratives, I can't believe that I'm here today now defending Twitter, but that's where I am. That's what Elon Musk has wrought. That, and that's why Tucker Carlson is taking his show, act, his pursuit of truth to Twitter. It's our last hope. Fox News paid Carlson $20 million a year to host a primetime one-hour show. He probably could have commanded $50 million a year had he played along with the uniparty hoax being run by establishment Democrats and Republicans and corporate media. Instead, he's sacrificing his very lucrative career and reputation to speak freely and truthfully. He's taking a bullet. It's what men are supposed to do. It's what Alex Jones has done for the last 30 years. Jones has been ridiculed as a liar and fraud throughout his career. He raised valid questions about the events on 9-11. The government has yet to give a logical explanation for the collapse of Building 7. Alex Jones celebrated Carlson's courage and what it could mean in the culture war. Let's watch together. Tucker Carlson's move today to Twitter with Elon Musk is way bigger than Tucker Carlson. It's about the death of cable media. It's about the death of the establishment. It's about the death of the intelligence agencies and the censorship and the surveillance. Tucker has 25, 30 million views on the videos he now puts out on Twitter. Five, six times what he had on Fox News. The dinosaurs that fired him miscalculated. And I told you two weeks ago, he's not going with some new big outlet. He's going to be independent. I had that obviously directly from Tucker Carlson's camp. And now we're here. So their attempts to silence me and to silence you have now backfired. And Tucker Carlson, as the archetypal populist promoting liberty and freedom and peace and prosperity, has been targeted by the system and their attempts to silence him have failed. And that just illustrates there's not just evil in the universe, there's good as well. And so I am so excited about what Tucker's doing. He can now broadcast from his house in Maine. He can broadcast from his house in Florida. He can now directly reach out to people and cover things that Fox was suppressing. Sure, his contract said he had total freedom. He took a pay cut of two thirds to tell the truth, but they still try to control him. Tucker knew he was gonna be fired. I predicted it back in March and now it's here. He didn't sell out. I didn't sell out. You didn't sell out. We're not selling out. Our freedoms, our liberty, our ideas of what we stand for are not for sale. And that's why what Tucker Carlson's done is so beautiful. That's why what you've done is so beautiful. People want freedom. That's why InfoWars is still on the air in many ways stronger than ever, only because of your support and your word of mouth. 
Tucker's stronger than ever because of you. We're going to win this, folks. T l l listen, Tucker's just the tip of the iceberg. Elon Musk has gotten on board with Liberty because he knows which way the wind is blowing. The globalists are not invincible. In fact, they're very easy to beat if we simply wake up and support freedom and stand up for basic human liberties and the basic concepts that have made society so successful. I love America, and I love you. We're going to win. America is not tyranny. America is the example of liberty, and we will win together. God bless Tucker Carlson, and God bless you all. So <clears throat> I am nearly as hopeful as Alex Jones. We're, we're, I'm starting to see us reach this long overdue age of enlightenment. It's been 32 years since Oliver Stone released the movie JFK, a film that pointed to a CIA plot to kill President Kennedy. Corporate media blasted Stone as a conspiracy theorist. It's the same smear that has been leveled at Jones and Carlson. Jones, Carlson, and Stone are men who sacrifice their reputations to tell the truth. Elon Musk is another wealthy and powerful man taking a bullet to protect free speech. The billionaire founder of Tesla's decision to acquire Twitter and reconfigure it to allow free speech has made him an enemy of the establishment and it's made him polarizing. The responsibility of dominion requires the ultimate self-sacrifice. I'm inspired because I'm seeing wealthy, powerful men sacrifice their reputations in protection of free, of free speech. That's what, when God gave man the responsibility of dominion over everything that creepeth on the earth, this is what he was talking about. Men protecting order. Women, they're not wired for the kind of sacrifice that men are. They have a different calling. They're responsible for the replenishment of earth and life. They sacrifice for the protection of children, not for the maintenance of an orderly society. Women suffer when their children experience discomfort. That's why the protection of feelings is so important to them. As women exercise more and more dominion over American society, we have prioritized the protection of feelings above truth and order. If a boy or man feels like a girl, the matriarchy affirms that feeling with little concern about truth or societal order. The priority is avoiding hurt feelings. That's how a society ends up with bat and balls men sharing a bathroom with and or competing against women. Feelings disrupt order and truth. America has eliminated tolerance for rebuke. It's too painful. We've twisted scripture to justify the elimination of judgment. Atheists, atheists love quoting the Bible, Matthew 7 and 1. Judge not lest ye be judged. They avoid dozens of scriptures where Jesus and the disciples directly command us to judge unrighteous behavior. They avoid context and a full understanding of the word. Man needs to be rebuked and judged by other men standing on the word of God. My gluttony should be rebuked. Behavior that contradicts God's instructions should be called out and admonished, including sexual promiscuity, guilty, and homosexuality, not guilty. Man and woman are outside the roles designed for us. We've created a society where we affirm everything that kills us out of fear that we might hurt someone's feelings. This new standard has empowered sin and the sinful. Twitter, you've heard me complain for years, has been the LGBTQ plus heaven. It has served as the muscle for the alphabet mafia. Anyone who stood on biblical values and refused to affirm transgenderism and homosexuality faced reputation assassination. 
The transgender crowd sees opposition to puberty blockers and gender mutilation as issues worth dying for. Men who want to be women will take and deliver a bullet. It's in their nature. Women who want to be men will take and deliver a bullet. They're that desperate to prove their manhood. It's time for real men to return to their nature and prove their manhood. Tucker Carlson just did it. He should be a role model to all of us.